Yo guys, I'll be showing you how to create this dynamic alien squid creature thing in 6 main steps. Or if you want to save time, I also made the master file available for download on my Gumroad page. Link will be in the description below. Alright, so some time ago I made a version of it for my Instagram and it got quite the number of views. I can't remember if it was 20,000, maybe even 30,000, but it really blew my mind. People were responding really well to it and asking me, you know, how do you animate tentacles? I've tried, it's not an easy task. And I get it, you know, I found a quick and easy way that I will be showing you in this tutorial. I've also been seeing Ghost 3D make some crazy actual octopus renders using Houdini. And, and he actually does physics simulations with sand simulations. And I'm sure his character is rigged and who knows what he does, but his are really awesome. And I just wanted to give him a quick shout out here on the tutorial for inspiring me to actually go ahead and make a tutorial on how to make something similar to his. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. All right, so we're going to open up. Cinema 4D. As you can see, I'm still rocking R19 just because I'm lazy to migrate all my plugins over. All right, once we have Cinema 4D, you're going to notice that mine's is a little different from yours. That's just because I'm more comfortable working this way. I like having a window here and a window over here. It kind of reminds me of Premiere. So let's set up the scene. Go here. We're going to make that full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. Uh, for the sake of tutorial, I'm going to keep this at 30, usually 24 or 60 or whatever you want. Set our renderer to Octane. Close that out. Now we're going to open up our Octane settings. Uh, change direct lighting to pass tracing and set this to 600 should be good for demonstration. GI clamp to 1. Enter. And we are ready to go. Close that. We're going to start off by creating our hair, our hair model. So what I mean by that is just creating a cone, setting the bottom radius to about 20 centimeters. Our height segments to about 70. We're going to set our bottom radius to 20 centimeters. Enter our height segments to about 70. You want to have a pretty dense Pretty dense model of a tentacle. After that, you're gonna to wanna to select your cone, hit key on the keyboard and make it makes that editable. All right, that completes step one. We're gonna go over and create the body now. So hold right here the object and select platonic. We're gonna move over to the settings and decrease it to like, I don't know, 25 or something, small enough. You're gonna make sure you click this again, go over to simulate. Hair objects, add hair. From there, you can see we have hair on our body. All right, with the hair selected, you're going to go into guides, root, and do polygon center. We're going to do the count set to 20. And that just means 20 tentacles. You could do less or more, whatever you want. Segments is going to be 16. And finally, length is going to be 350 centimeters. Then we're going to go over into hairs, click right here, roots, this little drop down menu and do as guides. From there, we're going to make our little hairs here dynamic by going into generate type and then instance. Final step is going to be making this cone hairs of this thing. How do we do that? We go back to hair, back into generate, open up this little instance and drag and drop this cone object in here once you do that you can see we have hairs kind of to fix that we're going to open up our hair material here move that over so you can see what we're doing we're going to go to thickness and change the root to about no not 30 20 centimeters and voila we have our creature here that concludes step two i'm going to go ahead and fire up octane just so we can see what we're working with. I know there's no textures or lighting yet, but I wanted to show you that our little hair model is working over here. As you can see, our cone object is showing up right here, right in the middle. And we really don't need it since we already added it to our platonic object. So how do we hide that? We hold Alt on our keyboard and click these two dots twice. From here, we're going back into hair. We're going to select forces and select hair to hair, which will give us better dynamics. Press play. And as you can see, we have a working creature that is also dynamic. It's looking awesome. From here, we're going to add our floor. 
So hold this little object and add a plane. I'm gonna open up and open up my four views. Select my size tool and resize that to make it big enough to fit our whole creature. Go back into this view. So this animation could work properly. We want to make sure that in the start of the animation, our creature is all the way above the floor. And to do that, all we got to do is press pause here. Rewind. Select our body. Select our move tool and drag it up just so that our tentacles have some clearance against the floor. Now we're going back into plane, right click, hair tags and hair collider to make it react with the octopus. Go back into our platonic object, set a keyframe at the start, move over one frame. And we're gonna zoom out just so we can see our creature and bring it down to the floor. Not all the way crossing, but just a little bit above the floor and make another keyframe. And once we rewind and play that, we should have a dynamic floor with our little creature that's not alive yet. So how do we bring it to life? We're going to go into simulate and we're going to add some turbulence by going into particles and down into turbulence. What does that do? That just adds turbulence to the scene, making the tentacles wiggle a little bit. Once we have our turbulence right here, we're going to go into strength and set that to 500 centimeters. You could do less or more. I mean, you'll see the result here in a bit. We're going to change the scale to 100% just to activate that. Enter and we're going to click play to see how it looks. As you can see, our thing is moving. So sometimes in some occasions, this may not work. And the problem will be that if you go into your hair object and go into forces, it'll say exclude forces and it'll have turbulence in there. To fix that, all you got to do is click here, press include and drag and drop this turbulence straight into the forces just to make sure that the hair is picking up that added force that we added. And just like that, our thing is still working. Once your creature is finally working, we can um, go ahead and get creative with it. If you want, we could do set it back to the beginning, click our body, which is our platonic. I'm going to go ahead and change that and rename it to body. Should have done that a long time ago. Click our body. And as you remember, we made the keyframes here so it could fall from the sky and kind of land on the floor. That way it starts moving. So now I'm just going to set another keyframe right there move over i don't know 40 frames or so and have that crawl forward a little bit i'm gonna rotate a little bit also so it can move forward and rotate at the same time and then set the keyframe and that should give us some pretty cool motion yeah see that's awesome gives the illusion that it's walking and coming to attack you and this method by no means is perfect at all as you can see closely we will get some some clipping in the hair at times but hey it's a quick and fun way to create this alien creature thing from here you're free to go you could add a, i don't know noctane sky and just like that and we can add a glossy material into our hair model. And just real quickly, we can make it, I don't know, purple or something, a dark purple like that. And we just have a slimy little creature thing now. And you wanna make sure and apply the same texture into the body, just so you won't get that little white spot that we were getting right here. Pretty cool. And we are done. From here on out, you want to go ahead and create your scene. I don't know, maybe you want to add some buildings or some nature or maybe even put it underwater, whatever you want. But this is as far as I go. The rest is up to you. If you want to look at my scene, play with my scene, use assets from my scene, I made that available for download on my Gumroad page. Link will be in the description below. It is the price of a beer, but 
I hope you don't mind. I worked hard on this tutorial. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. I will be making a lot more tutorials in the very near future in this same format, which I consider to be coincise. My next tutorial will be on how to add this specific creature into real life footage, sort of like I did before and sort of like Ghost 3D does it and everything. So you can add it into your backyard or room or whatever corner by your house you want. It looks super cool. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.